Capricorn, this is your weekly tarot card reading from Born Without Boundaries Tarot. It's also your weekly astrology summary. I'm going to sprinkle astrology throughout this reading. This reading is for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, and Rising Sign. And I encourage you to take all of the energy that I describe where it resonates in your life. This is your reading, first and foremost. So take everything where it resonates. You can also check out your moon sign reading or your rising sign video because sometimes those will relate to you more than your sun sign video depending on the activity. We're gonna get into the astrological activity and for you guys, there's a lot and it's awesome. It's it's really intriguing. If you're, you're astrology enthusiasts, you'll, you'll, you'll geek out about this. It's, it's really interesting stuff that's happening with you and powerful, powerful stuff. Um, yeah, we're going to get into the details. There's always an extended reading, and I hope you guys join me for that. Um, the link is down below in the description box. I'll attach it to the end of this video, so you just click right on it and get right to it. Um, it's also going to be pinned to the top of the comment so section eventually. If you love this video, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you know when I upload your favorite content. And if you really, really love my content, I have a second YouTube channel called Astrology Motivation, where I go live every single weekday, Monday through Friday. So every single weekday I go live for a live chat and uh, I do a general tarot card reading over there and we talk shop, especially astrology. So I love those conversations and I would love for you to be a part of them. Check me out over there. Let's get it, okay? We have one card. <laughs> Uh, okay. Why do I love the astrology? I love the astrology this week because it's fascinating. For those of you who are born between January 18th, January 21st, 22nd, depending on where the sun left Capricorn for the year that you were born, end of Capricorn season, the, if your sun is in the end degrees of Capricorn, especially, let's put, put it this way, if it's between 28 degrees is ground zero. But that could be 29 degrees, it could be almost 30 degrees, could also be on the other side of 28, which is up to like, say, 20, 22, 24, not 22, that's too far out, say 20, 23, 24 degrees um, Capricorn. You are going, your natal sun is going to be conjunct with the sun pluto conjunction that's happening right now in capricorn and on saturday it's going to get super powerful because there's a new moon it's not in capricorn but it's at like one two degrees aquarius so there's it's still technically the sun is still technically conjunct pluto even though it's in another sign so it is going pluto is sitting right there on the top of your natal sun it's been there for a while which means change, absolute, like real life switching around, like internally that you're not, you, you're not the you you used to be and you don't want to be anymore. It's done. It's over. You're moving on to another, another stage of life because Pluto is total destruction for resurrection. That's what it is. It's also deep, dark things. So you could be experiencing tougher times right now because Pluto's sitting there, but really what it is. Pluto conjunct the sun is power. In fact, uh, I'm not even going to mess around with this. I'm not even going to mess around because I wrote it down. Because you know I won't remember, guys. But I have some adjectives here for you. And I want to describe to you what Pluto conjunct, sun conjunct Pluto is. Power. Authority. Control. Influence. And you will really definitely dominate. This is dominant energy. And then Change. It's the revelation of darknesses or things that were kept in the dark. And it could be painful situations that you have to go through, maybe in a public way, or that's visible for everybody, or you finally being able to see or shed light on dark things that you have been through. So is it an easy time? No, it's a powerful time. There's lots of change and we'll all be experiencing it, but it's all Capricorns, but it's especially those born in the end degrees of Capricorn. This is, this is powerful, powerful energy for you. 
and you're just not gonna take no sh anymore. I'm just gonna let you know that. There's more. Saturn is in Aquarius, and by the middle of this week, it's going to be conjunct to Venus. So that gives you all Capricorns kind of this romantic sensibility. Your ruling dignitary is now married or, or melding its energy with beauty, you know, the, the energy of beauty and charisma. So I think for you guys, this is mostly not going to be bad things. This is going to be powerful change that you drive forward. Now, there are a few hiccups. Um, Saturn for most of this week is um, semi-square to Mercury and Mercury isn't, Mercury just went out of retrograde, but it's really not going to start moving direct to the end of this week. Um, so yeah, you may find that you have a lot of challenges, but you can't get shit done because, you know, the, the online platforms are still failing or, um, the communications, there's been glitches or the information or paperwork didn't come in. Those will become challenging for you. And then toward the end of the week, when Venus is conjunct Saturn, this conjunction will be, I believe, semi-square to Chiron, which means semi-square to Mercury on one side, Chiron on the other. It's a sense of having to deal with and find a way to feel beautiful or heal, especially things that were said that made you feel ugly or hurt and they still cause you pain. So... I wouldn't call this the easiest week, but I would call it one of the most powerful weeks because it's there's so much of just inspiration to move forward, uh, power to move forward, and courage to move forward and heal dark things that have hurt you from the past or that inspire you to live a totally different kind of life and be a whole new version of who you are. Let's get into the cards. The first card that came out, I thought was so hysterical. I was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> um, it's the Four of Cups. This usually means I'm not interested. Or it means I got so much on my plate right now, I wasn't able to even look. You know, sometimes it's not that people aren't interested. It's that this, the Four of Cups means they haven't gotten around to it. They can't, they're, still, they're still trying to work this out. I don't know how I feel about this coming in. Now this is being offered hand to God. So sometimes it's that we're so distracted by all the other things that we're worried about, we're missing one of the best opportunities of our life that's being offered to us. But you know, if you're not ready, you're not ready. Then we have the 10 of swords, which absolutely means complete and total ending. Um, because of so much pain, so much suffering, just so being done and finished and it can't get any worse than this like it just this is the ending now it's interesting how we have two things on two different sides let me show you the cards i know we're not very technical here what can i say over here in the past and cards only come out in the past you can answer it below you know what i'm going to say uh, they only come out in the past if they have something to do with what's going on right now so we have the three of pentacles, which is people appreciating your work. So in the past, you had a very fulfilling job. You had a job where people really did respect you, showed respect to you, paid respect to you, and you're doing really well. And now it seems like you're hurt or sad or thinking back to yesteryear because you don't feel like you're anywhere near there. You feel completely disconnected from actually being appreciated or feeling useful. Even if you still have a good paying job, this is about feeling inspired and feeling useful. And then we have this over here. So this is the future, which means this energy right here of just being done with being bored or feeling like you have no value, like you like almost feeling neutered, almost feeling neutered. Over here, it's saying you ain't going to take that shit anymore. That's what's in this feeling right here of being done with it done with indifference done with not being appreciated or not being seen or feeling like I don't I don't bring value to this or it's just not 
You're just not enthusiastic about it anymore. Something is finished. Let it go. I think you're ready to let it go. And then you have the two of pen, the uh, two of wands, which means you will start to look in a different direction. You will have the courage to be able to look in a different direction. Now, this is just the beginning, folks. Let's pull a moon card because we do have that really powerful new moon coming on the 21st. That's Saturday. But remember, start Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. When the moon is in Aquarius, you're going to be, it's new. You're going to be able to feel it. <sighs> Future. Show the world the real you. This is Aquarius. So this is full moon in Aquarius. We've got a new moon in Aquarius coming up. Full moon in Aquarius obviously happens during Leo season. I don't think we're waiting till Leo season. I think that it's right here, right now, that there is just going to be something that's revealed, either revealed about you. And See, this thing. this is the thing dealing with Pluto. It may not be you totally controlling or getting to decide if what's revealed about you came, comes out. Pluto does what it wants to do. It comes out. So there might be, but there's some sort of expose, and I hope that you're in charge of it but this is show the world the real you and that could have something to do with i am good enough in other words you're finally getting the strength to be able to share something about yourself that you were ashamed of or felt was not lovable you're finally realizing no i'm good enough to be loved even for the things that i'm ashamed of and this is it. This is about getting rid of shame or being ashamed about part of who you are. Healing. By showing, hey, I'm going to open myself up here, especially through friends. Especially through friends. So friends could have a huge... Because Saturn is in Aquarius. Friends could have a huge impact on what has made you feel like, yes, I am good enough for everything that's coming my way. Maybe somebody at a distance from you. It doesn't really matter where they are. What matters is they made you realize there are other options. And now you have the strength, the aptitude, and maybe a little bit of even the desperation, though I don't think so. I think this is power. I think you finally have the energy to embrace everything about who you are and realize I can have something different. I do deserve it. Now, it's interesting how you can know that you deserve something versus really allowing it, you know, for it to be more than a concept and for you to actually accept that as a reality. So that's really the power of this moment. You accepting your worthiness now this could we're going to get deeper into this this could be an actual opportunity maybe a friend is trying to make something up to you you know somebody's trying to be friendly make something up to you somebody's being good to you but this is about being truthful really aquarian energy show the world the real you show me what you got show me what you got and that you are good enough prove it especially in relationship to a job you used to do you know, maybe the motivation is coming from, I'm going to prove that mother never should have fired me. And that's fine. That's fine. Especially if when you got laid off or you lost everything, whatever happened, you started to feel, I am worthless. Maybe I never actually even deserved all that I had over here. Those are dangerous thoughts. And those are the thoughts you'll be confronting and uh, conquering. Certainly, but not only by your thoughts. This is about proving yourself. You come out into the open and you say, hello, here I am. This is the real me. And I'm capable of this. And you'll start to see. So just looking at things from a different perspective and being open to new opportunities. Three more cards are on the table. Let's get into them. We have the wheel of, four. this is all in the future. We have the Wheel of Fortune, which is karma. You finished a, some, you have worked hard and you're about to be rewarded for that, basically. And then we have the Five of Cups, disappointment. 
left behind. Maybe somebody was not interested in you and you, you felt completely decimated, right? This scent, oh, stop, stop. I just heard this. Leo, Aries, Sagittarius, do you have one of those in your life? Would be a male. I'm sorry, would be a masculine. Doesn't have to be a male. Masculine, progressive energy, aggressive energy that disappointed you in the past. That's the Mercury retrograde Chiron. You, it's kind of like that scene from like, you remember that scene from Pretty Woman? Remember that scene? Where Julie Roberts, she plays Vivian. Um, she goes in all, you know, dressed like a whore, like a hook, because that's what she is. She's a hooker. And Richard Gere gives her all this money, this wad of money, and she goes into this posh store on Rodeo Drive, and these women are bitches to her. Like bitches. And they won't even let her shop in the store. They said, I think you should leave. And she was all kinds of sad, you know, in, in, that, in that beautiful, like almost translucent skin that Julie Roberts has where she just starts to cry. And then the guy, the nice guy at the hotel hooks her up with people who actually take care of her. And she's, cause she got this ton of money and she's just shopping and she goes back into that store and she's like, you know the scene. I know you know the scene. I know you know it. And she goes back in that store and says, hi, I was, I was in here before. Do you remember me? Oh, no. Oh, they don't remember her at all. You want to know why? Because they never looked at her in the face. I mean, Julia Roberts got a face. You know, I know that she wasn't Julia Roberts. She was playing a character, but still, she's beautiful. If you're, even, if you're looking at somebody in the eye, you're going to recognize them. They didn't even look at her in the eye. That's why. Okay? That's why they didn't recognize her. Because it's not like she had some mask on, you know? Anyway. And then she's showing them all her shopping bags. She said, I came in here before and you wouldn't, you wouldn't help me. You, you told me to leave. Big mistake. She said, wait, she said, do you work on commission? Big mistake. Huge. I have to go shopping now. That's your moment. That's your moment. That's what this energy is. I have to go shopping now. It doesn't have to have anything to do with shopping. That's your moment this week. That moment of, oh, it just serendipitously, it comes back around. Some motherfucker that did not appreciate your ass and thought they could do without. This could be a boss. I mean, for you guys, bosses is important to rela as relationships. It's like, it's, de it's definitely like, it could definitely be that person who said, yeah, we're not interested. Yeah, we're not interested. Yeah, we're not here. You about to show up. You about to turn out. And this motherfucker, you probably didn't even invite him. You probably didn't even know that you, you wouldn't even try to get their attention. And that's the beautiful part of it is for the universe to show you just how far you came by showing you that even with what you lost, or missed out on, you didn't miss out on nothing. You're in a much better spot. And they're gonna be looking at you like, oh, uh, can I help you? Or can I be with you now? Can I work with you now? You wanna come work with us now? No, I'm busy. That's the moment. Ah! I love it. I love that moment. Let's get into the details of how this is going down. Because I know all y'all is not going shopping on Rodeo Drive. So let's see where this is happening. What, what is happening? The world is changing. So A, this is what this is telling me is number one, major arcana, this is fate. <laughs> it's like whether or not you knew it, the universe had this all plotted out. Second of all, this is, this is absolutely going to help you realize I am somebody different now. So it's not the takeaway of, uh, you know, can see or it's, I'm really free. I'm really done with what I used to be, who I used to be, or the person that I used to be that people used to underestimate and look over. Or even though I do a great job and they acknowledge it, they'll still dump me if they have to. 
you have changed. Your life has changed and that has become a life of value, of increased value. I think increased value. For some of you, it may be decreased value, but I think most of you, increased value. And this is where you're going to see, wow. If I had prayed the prayers, if I had, if the prayers that I prayed back then had gotten answered, I would not be as happy as I am right now. Let's go to the extended. I will see you guys there.